Hey guys, we're back with another update on the Victory 357 Hawk. And first off, let me say that quite a few of you had commented on my last video and said that this looked more like a Buck Rogers plane. And I have to agree with you. I never even thought of Buck Rogers until I was reading it in the comments. And you guys nailed it. <laughs> because it really does look like something out of Buck Rogers. So that's what we're going to refer to it as from now on. The Buck Rogers build. <laughs> so, thank you for that. Um, a few more of you had commented that uh, you had been looking at this kit and trying to decide whether or not you wanted to buy it. Well, let me tell you, be forewarned. While it is very cool looking, it is a booger to build. And I'll go in and, and tell you why. So let's take a look at where we're at here. And this is where we're at. We've got the two halves of the fuselage put together. We've got the uh, uh, grill, radiator, whatever you want to call it. We got that in there. Um, we got the two halves of the, and again, I don't know if you'd call them engines or nacelles or whatever but uh, they're they're put together and this thing has been fighting me the whole way once I got past the cockpit it was all downhill from there I, the, the cockpit went together nicely but this has just been ridiculous uh, to start with, and some of you may not agree with this de decision that I made, but speaking of the cockpit, it's not in there. I decided to forego putting the cockpit in there because of the major modifications you would have to make in order to get that to fit inside of there. Um, the whole like floorboard, the base, would all have to be reshaped. Um, the control panel here, I would have had to have broke that off, shortened it, which means shorting you know, trimming the PE piece that's on it to make it shorter because it stands up so it's above the windshield here. Um, very poor fitting kit. Uh, very poor. So this way I preserved the cockpit and what I'm going to do, and it, it, it's always frustrated me anyways, building, I love building planes, don't get me wrong. I love building planes. But it's always frustrated me that you put all that work and all that detail into the cockpit and then close up the two pieces of the fuselage and on... 90% of the planes, or at least the ones that I've built, you can't see it. It's gone. And that's just kind of frustrating. So, what I'm going to do with this one, and that would have been the case on this one, because you can see how small the, the windows are here, and you wouldn't have been able to see anything in there. Um... So what I decided to do was I'm going to black out the glass 
and kind of make it like a like a static display uh, something that you may see in a museum or something like that um, I'm going to use to me a smoke and just black out the glass and that's that's going to be it so but some of the other problems that we've had is if you guys decide to go ahead and buy this when you're putting this together let me let me show you the directions here real quick here's where it's showing you how to put the the two halves together and then you come down to do these like I said nacelles engines whatever you want to call them um, these do not match what I had to do with these is to take some sandpaper and take each half and sand it down to get them to match and then that way when they went together um, and I've done very little sanding on this but you can see the the seams are practically non-existent so once you get it sanded down then they'll match and they'll go together um, and these little turbines here or whatever those things are practically impossible to get in there straight they're so small <laughs> but anyways that's nothing major but then it goes to putting the the main wings together here and it's telling you to put the top onto the bottom and then um, if you go ahead here then it's telling you to put it onto the plane well these fit so crappy you're going to have to sand the bottom part of the wing right here, this part. You're going to have to do some sanding and reshaping on that, on the front and the back. And then on the fuselage of the plane, you're going to have to sand it to where it matches what you did here in order to get this piece to fit. Then for the top, part of the wings here what I did is I put it get this out of the way here I put the the wing on there I just kind of dry fit it and no matter which side you put it on it doesn't matter but the top and the bottom do not match at all. Uh, they're way off. You get the back half to line up here. You get the side to line up here. But then when it comes to the front along this edge, the bottom half of the wing sticks out probably an eighth of an inch and you have to file or sand that off in order to get it to match with the top half and then you have to do the same on this side so it's just been and getting getting this nose piece on right here the grill that's not really easy either because I mean it wants to sit crooked so we've had to do quite a bit of sanding on that and I still have some more sanding to do right along in here so anyways that's uh, that's where we're at so we're gonna keep plugging here and the the next step is gonna be to get the tail 
wings on and to get these engine pods glued on and then we're going to be ready for do a little more sanding and then we'll be ready for some primer so we'll be back with another update so hang on we'll be right back alrighty we are back again and we are finally ready for primer I believe um, we've got it all together except for the last few pieces that uh, go on the outside of the uh, fuselage there's a, a ladder that goes on the outside right here there's a hatch that goes up on the top which is their way in and out and the, the fitting issues and getting it put together they are they have still continued <laughs> um, as you can see here these engine pods or nacelles whatever you want to call them they're supposed to be like straight up and down with the body the main body of the plane and these are supposed to be straight up and down and the rear wings here have got a bit of an of an angle to them well let me tell you something <laughs> they do not fit like that out of the box not even close um, I got them as close as I could get them and what I had to do was you've got to do a lot of sanding on the end of the wing and on the engine pod to reshape the angle where the two of them meet because they don't go just straight on you they glue on at an angle out of the box if you just glue it on your the uh, let's see if I can get it here to where we can see it the the bottom of the engine pod right here that's supposed to be straight up and down is going to be kicked out that way almost I'm doing this looking through the viewfinder sorry guys but out of the box it's at an angle like this I mean, it's way off so you have to re sand or reshape the angles of the the wing right here and of the pod to straighten it out to get it to go straight up and down and you gotta <clears throat> excuse me you gotta do that on both sides and the back wings that are supposed to be at a slight inward angle and again I got those as best as I could get them but the locating pins that are on the side here it's not really even a pin it's a like a tab and a slot just sand that tab right off don't don't even try to try to use it at all um, just sand that slot off and then on this side where this wing is at an angle here you've got two little pins on the the wing part here that are supposed to go into two holes and they don't even come close to fitting I had to re-drill the holes and on such a thin 
part because you don't want to go all the way through to this side so you got to be really careful and just like just barely touch it with your your drill bit just enough to get those pins to go in there or you could just shave those pins right off and just put it on there use super glue to where it'll like tack up real quick so you don't have to hold it for a half hour <laughs> but anyways um, we it, it's been fighting us but we finally got it uh, we've got the the seam work taken care of here and on the other side here it's taken care of where these where the wing and this pod join but we're gonna we're gonna shoot some primer on it tomorrow and see where we uh, see where we end up well here it is the last segment for the Victory 357 Hawk Ekrano plan, plane, plan, whatever, otherwise referred to as the Buck Rogers build. Um, just to give you a little bit of history on this one, because this was a real plane, it did fly. Um, it came, it was created, I guess you could say, or invented in Russia um, shortly after World War II. And it was from the Gravity Control Propulsion Research Center. So, anyway, I, I, won't, uh, I won't bore you with all the the history on it and everything, but it's it's a weird plane. It really did exist. It really did fly. Although they do say that it was a uh, technical technology demonstrator and had little space for crew or cargo. But it was the first step into the world of gravity modulated vehicles. So it may have been a technological wonder but this kit sure wasn't <laughs> it's a terrible kit uh, I know a lot of you have commented on my video that you were uh, going to look into getting this one or you had seen it and wondered about it well don't wonder anymore <laughs> it's, it's terrible it's really not worth the headache, at least in my opinion. But the, the best thing to come out of this kit was the paint job at the very end. Um, I'm really pleased with that. Yeah, I used um, XF16 flat aluminum. I thinned that down and airbrushed it and that came out really nice and then the the silver around the uh, grill here uh, that's just my favorite silver testers in the little jar but if you notice one thing that that is missing as I come around here again there's no windshield that's because the windshield is sitting right here it doesn't fit surprise surprise <laughs> it's way too big for that opening I, I'm gonna have to do some major sanding and filing 
on the opening and the windshield because it's it's really not even the right shape. So, as far as I'm concerned, this one's done for now. Um, I'll I'll get the uh, I'll get the windshield in there one day. So, but it's done. And we'll uh, we'll probably have a final coming up on our small scale group build tomorrow. I've got the the body all painted. It's all in cleared, and all I got to do is just put it together, which shouldn't take long at all. I should be able to finish that tonight, and then I'll I'll get that uh, get that final up probably tomorrow. So, and one last thing before I let you go, I just want to remind everybody that March is the Bandai group build, of which I will be co-hosting with my good friend Daniel, Munchkin Modeling Man. So, if, uh, if any of you guys want to join in on that, the only rules to that group build is it has to be a Bandai kit. Doesn't matter what kind of Bandai kit, as long as it's a Bandai kit. Um, let me hold on. Sorry, didn't mean to make anybody sick. But everybody's probably familiar with Bandai Star Wars. Any of the Star Wars kits are eligible Bandai Star Wars kits and you're probably f familiar with the Gundams so any of the Gundams would be eligible but what you might not know is that Bandai also makes other kits this is what I'm going to be building for the the group build. The deep sea vessel exploring vessel drill. Ah, I'll spit it out. Scientific deep sea drilling vessel chick you. So that's that's what I'm going to be building. But they also make cars. which this is another one that's probably going to be coming up on my bench here real quick. I just got this one not too long ago. It's a 1 16th or 1 12th scale? 1 16th scale. The 1910 Thomas. So we're going to be we're going to be getting that one out here real soon. But I also have a Type 41 Brigati Royale there too. That's also a Bandai kit. And, as I just almost fell here, but there's one other Bandai kit that I am looking for. Because you guys know that I love Bandai. And I just want to throw this out there. If any of you guys in your stash have this kit, it's a uh, it's a tank from the 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 Gundam Wars, and uh, but it is it's a, I've seen one build video on it on YouTube, and that is an awesome kit. But it's also very expensive on eBay. Um, but if any of you guys have got that kit in your stash, and if you want to make a deal on it, get a hold of me. My uh, email address will be in the description box down below the video. Or if you have my, my number, feel free to text me or 
However, but I would I would definitely be willing to make a deal on that one. So, okay. Been rambling long enough. Looking forward to the Bandai build that's coming up in just a couple weeks. And we'll talk to everybody later. See you on the next video. Bye, guys.